USA Warrior Stories is a not-for-profit organization designed to record, archive, and share videos of veterans' stories to help veterans make a connection with one another and to help us all better understand their sacrifices for our freedoms. My dad was in the Army, my dad was in communications, and I believe uh, the family's prayers prevented him for going over. He was in California getting ready to go over in 1944. And so in 1949, he came out to Sag Harbor, my mother being from Southampton. My mother also served. She was an officer in the Navy, as a Navy nurse, after high school. I went to junior college. I bombed out of there, and then I went into the Navy. My father had the recruiter on the phone to me. So that would have been... December of 68. Basic training, um, I was there in a company, uh, 073, which was McHale's Navy number, and we were the laughing stock of the, of, uh, in Great Lakes. I was a religious PO. So a religious PO, you, had to, you, you weren't one stripe sewn on by yourself on the uniform. I had two, two like, like a seaman, seaman recruit. Well, one day when I was sleeping under my bunk, supposed to take people to the church, uh, I had already taken one group. I said, well, no. He, he grabbed me. He says, what are you doing? I said, eh. He made me <laughs> educational petty officer, which was three stripes. I went to school. I, I started with Great Lakes, uh, basic electronics, and um, I was a night student. I went to school from four at night. Four in the afternoon till midnight, which is another blessing because no one messed you during the day and you didn't have any duty. I think maybe you had to have a watch every four days. And then after there, they sent me home for a couple weeks. Then after that, I went to Key West, underwater weapons school, torpedoes. Then after that, they sent me home for four weeks, two weeks. Then after that, I went to underwater weapons launcher school for Polaris and Poseidon in Damn Neck, Virginia. Then after that, after that, after that, they sent me home. For, for a couple of weeks, then I went to sub school in New London, which I was right across the sound to come home, you know, to partake in whatever I wanted to when I had a day off. You never take a woman on board. Years ago, they used to do Dependence Day. They'd take you on the boat, dive the boat in the sound, and then bring it up. My parents are on board. My father freaked out. He went down the hatch, and then he said, I can't take it. Go on. My mother, God bless us all, is in the cruise mess. Son, the air conditioning is lovely. Mom, it's not for us. Would you like a piece of peach pie, Ma? I'd love one. She had the peach pie. Could I have a second piece? Well, sure. My mother goes off. Next day, station and maneuvering watch. I am number four line on the tail in the water. Lines off, harbor master. Tugboat takes us, turn us around, two tugboats, turn us around, out the sound, dive the boat, 40,000 gallons of water poured in. There was a $10 part not hooked up that had an indication of a green light on the head valve, which is the biggest valve in the snorkel mast, the water poured in. Into the yards, all the motors, air conditioners off. Ah, I guess we'll have a break. Nah. Out. Harbor master, tugboat, out to sea, 106 degrees, two weeks going to Charleston. Thanks, Ma, for being on board. You never volunteer, they say. Well, who wants to volunteer? And the guy next to me put his hand up, so I put my hand up. So he grabbed me. It wasn't to go to a submarine. I went to, un I went to Polaris and Poseidon nuclear weapons plant in Charleston, South Carolina, for 14 months. And then towards the end of it, I said, what about my career here? So I went to a personnel man. I said, his name was Charlie Cross. Charlie, I want to be on a submarine. He said, well, John, you got to, you got to uh, sign these papers. And will you sign the papers to, to cut your shore leave to go? I said, sure, sign away. They sent me to uh, Bremerton, Washington. Bremerton, Washington, the submarine that I was on was in the yard. I said, wait a minute now, I haven't even gone to sea yet. And I've been in the Navy two and a half years. I got on board and, and what's known as someone takes you in hand and I was this person's house mouse. He would teach me the ropes. He said, don't touch anything and forget everything you learned. We'll teach you. So that's, that's right out of the gate. 
And my first duties was, I was publication petty officer, which whatever, any additions to the publications, and you had to update them and then get rid of stuff. And then when you, when you transfer the boat when on a patrol cycle, which I'll go into, you, I was in charge of the publications for my crew. I was on the gold crew to the blue crew. So that was one. I also was a torpedo min, missile trained. They started me out in the missile department, and I was a roving patrol in the missile department. Three, three decks, about every mid-watch, about 600 valves and gauges to, if it's a valve, eye hand, open close, and then read the gauges and do charts, every mid-watch. I was on the first class of FBM, Fleet Ballistic Missile, the George Washington class, and the George Washington was 598 class. Patrick Henry was 599, the Lee, the Lincoln, and the Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, this is the uh, Patrick Henry. It was the second submarine um, built out of the 41 for freedom uh, when Russia was going to the going to the space with the dogs and the cosmonauts and to compete with the Russians in one phase of uh, defense, they cut the hulls and added the missile deck, which is 100 feet. Uh, the submarine that Patrick Henry made 60 patrols, which is 15 years under the water. Uh, when you go through the Straits of Gibraltar is one of the scary things because the Russian troll is try to cut your floating antenna. If they cut your floating antenna, you have no ways of receiving communication without coming up and shooting a mast. You don't want to shoot a mast. When you go on patrol, it's total silence. A patrol cycle is, there's 30 R&R, &R, and then there's 60 days in the, uh, what's called the, uh, the simulators. So simulators would be wherever your home ported, you'd go into the classroom slash the things, damage control, they'd flood it, do things. Um, for me, it would be uh, torpedo tubes or missile tubes. So let's say now we're through that, I lived in the barracks in New London. So for me, we took buses to Quonset Point, Rhode Island. And I was on the, uh, what is it called? The, when you bring stuff, customs, aha. I was in charge, <laughs> customs, wow. Uh, the officer said to me in charge, Johnny, no one goes in the bags, whatever you bring home. No one touches them, just make sure they can come and see me. So we load our bags up, we fly military jet to Madrid. Madrid, you're there four days, you change the cruise, now you're on the boat. So now you start the 60 days of getting her ready. Five days before Five or six days before you go, you go what's known as uh, angles and dangles, sea trials. Then you put the boat through everything you can. Hell, test depth, emergency surface, angles and dangles, 45 degree down, all ahead full, all ahead back. Example, if you take a string across the bulkhead, at, say, test depth, and it comes up, it snaps the string. The whole HY-80 moves under the pressure. After angles and dangles, come in, all stores, you're next to the tender, basically. You're loading the stores, and then you close the hatch and you're gone for 60 days or more, depends. That would be a patrol cycle, then you come home, Four days, you change the crew, then you fly home. This is a Trident. They're 575 feet long as compared to mine, which is 350, 360. So imagine, 24 missiles. The D5 is six stories high. It's three stage, the missiles. Just, uh, I don't believe I ever missed a watch, and I don't believe I was ever late in four years. And I was proud of what I did and I do it again. In fact, all my peers, all the people that I know from Sag Harbor, every one said they go back in a heartbeat. And my one friend had a stipulation, who I was his best man, he was in Nam, and he said to me, John, only if you bring the periscope to the foxhole, this way when we raise it up, we won't get shot. 
It was the most important thing I think I've done in my life. Uh, I'd say one thing, and I've learned that when you come back, the world doesn't change, you gotta change. And I'm still evolving from it. And I still get goosebumps about it.